There we go. This is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, senior leaders, and C-suite executives share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. Question number one. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Kyle York, co-founder, CEO, and managing partner of York IE. That stands for Investment Enterprise because I'm a diverse entrepreneur, operator, and investor. I'm a businessman my whole life and uh, very focused on family business and being a family man at home. Interesting. Family businesses. I haven't really heard that slant yet, so I'll be very excited to hear your perspective on this. Great. All right. Question number two, what's the best thing about leading people from your perspective? I, my favorite thing is the impact you can make on a broader, uh, a broader network of individuals. What you notice as your career goes on and on, um, and people end up, I call it the coaching tree. They end up in other companies and other companies and other companies. Mm -hmm. And when you can have that sort of long game impact on people by giving them their first job or their first promotion or their first raise, there's just nothing more rewarding uh, than getting the phone call when someone has their first, right? And they have their first kid, they buy their first home and knowing you played a small part in that as a leader, giving them opportunities. So that's, that's it for me. It's just creating that impact and, and being able to play a part in people's livelihoods. Wow, that's amazing. Well, then I'll be really curious to hear your thoughts about question number three, which I often get a kick out of, is that I hear from other leaders occasionally that business would be great if it weren't for that pesky people part. I'm curious, especially in a family business world where there's got to be a lot of, you know, consternation and in some cases, power struggles. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I grew up in a family business. It was a sporting good retail store that's now a third generation uh, business called York Athletics Manufacturing. Um, so I have just decades and decades of experience and, and got my business foundation and family business. Uh, and my dad used to always say in all facets of life growing up that it's the people. And I, he used to say it when someone cut you off on the road, on the highway. He used to say it when a coach, you know, benched you. He used to say it when someone showed up late to work he'd always bring the core fundamental thing to it's the people, right? And he'd say, it's the people, it's the principle of the thing. And I never really got it honestly till I got probably into college and into my first internships and then my first jobs where you start to realize that the culture you create, the people you hire, the people you put around you, the people you work for and with, um, they make kind of the world go around, they make business go around. Um, I think it's really important, obviously, to harness the good. <laughs> I get more uh, of the good people um, and try to sort of, diminish the noise and the bad people. And, and, you know, I think if you can invest in more good people, you'll be, you'll be in much better shape. Well, I love that. So it's like, you know, having their back and, and being their biggest advocate, it sounds like is one of the key, key elements to helping them to become who they want to become. It's a two way street. You know, mm -hmm. I always, we always hear all these podcasts like to talk about mentors. I always like to talk about loyalists. You know, I think when you're a leader, the more loyalists you create, the more they pay it for, the more they pass it around, the more they become mentors. And then, you know, the loyalists follow them. So I think it's just, it's just something that you really need to focus on and play the long game around. You remind me of that video that's out there about the, the, cra the first follower, right? The lone nut who's willing to actually follow the crazy person who's out there with this vision, you know, talking about all of that. So the, the idea of that loyalist really kind of falls in alignment with that. That's great. What are the successful business leaders like yourself should be on the podcast? Who else should we be listening to? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I thought long and hard about this one, uh, Stacey. The, the, when I was kind of coming up in my rise, I was really young. You know, when I became chief revenue officer at Dime, which is a company we sold uh, to Oracle in 2016 and, start, and built that company up in my career, you know, I didn't have a lot of people to turn to and built a fast growth software as a service technology business. And so there was a group of kind of contemporaries that I work closely with, uh, guys like Richard Terry Lloyd, who is the CRO of Zora, which is an online billing platform, or Mark Roberge, who was in a similar role with HubSpot, who you may know. Um, yeah. he, actually, Mike Volpe was another HubSpot guy, who was a chief marketing officer there. My first boss, yeah. Travis Warren, who was an engineer turned executive. You know, These are people that, again, early on were peers and mentors and leaders to me. Um, and I hope they grab some nuggets of insights from me the other way around uh, along that, that journey as well. But those are just some folks that I could think of off the top of my head. Love that. And, and again, I think this is what's important is that people feel like that there's other folks out there like them doing it, right? So this whole like, give me, 
the household names we all know, but who is the guy out there, you know, rolling the sleeves up, making it happen every day? Those are the folks that I want to talk to. So, yes, certainly. Uh, and we had that both in engineering and technologists, as well as in sales and marketing leaders across our industry. So, you know, I have lots of, lots of great people I'd love to point you to. What piece of advice about communication would you give to other leaders? Um, you know, actually do it. <laughs> I think most <laughs> leaders are actually really bad at communicating. I think they think they're communicating. I think okay. they, they believe they're accessible. Uh, they believe they're always on because they're working hard and executing. But I don't think leaders, you know, uh, you know, walk the walk in the way that they really need to when it comes to execution on communication. So, you know, I think it's important to do broadcasting, broad level, you know, communication, small group communication, skip level communication, one-on-one -on -one communication, other leadership, peer collaboration. Uh, those things are really important. The other thing I'd say is leaders don't do a really good job communicating um, necessarily outwardly and inwardly. I think it's important that leaders are also market evangelists, industry evangelists, thought leaders in their space. Uh, the, the reputation that you glean for yourself outside the day-to-day -day of your inner workings of your company are just as important to the inner workings of your company as the internal communication as well. And then lastly, uh, don't just communicate downward. I think too many leaders forget to communicate with their board, uh, their bosses, the leaders that might live in and above them or around them, their shareholders or stakeholders, uh, their wives, their husbands. Uh, <laughs> communicate with everybody a little bit more effectively and don't just say you're a leader or a communicator, actually just get up and do it. Well, and again, you know, I think great communication comes from practice, right? We all like what we think we're going to say, but what we actually say can sometimes be two very different things. So I think you're really hitting the nail on the head with that one. Practice what you're going to say and do it often. That's right. Tell us about your favorite boss or teacher. Who's really influenced you? Yeah, you know, I've, I have so many folks along, you know, my growth curve where, you know, I turn to people that were really additive in my life. Um, one gentleman I wanted to acknowledge, I had a teacher named Wally Labelzik who taught mm. um, senior year in high school law class. Um, unfortunately, just a few years ago, he actually passed away uh, in his early 60s. Um, but Wally taught this law class. Uh, it's kind of funny, like law, I never wanted to be a lawyer. And no, many people in the class, like maybe, you know, single percentage point, you know, people wanted to actually become a lawyer. But, you know, everybody took Wally's class and you had to sign up early to get into Wally's class. And it was because it taught you so much, like, you know, if you think about the law and the courtroom, it was like courtroom setup, right? So you'd have a case, you'd read you through the case study, you'd either be defense or prosecution or the judge, right? Or the jury. Oh, wow. And you'd run through opening statements, deliberations, uh, cross-examinations, closing arguments, uh, sentencing, negotiation. And just think about all the like life skills and communication skills and leadership skills you get you know, public speaking, uh, just confidence, uh, you know, reading a room, being able to think on your feet, how to adapt when situations change or, or things hit you uh, that you didn't expect. Um, I just found it to be the, the greatest course I took in any of my education I ever had. And, you know, uh, uh, rest in peace, Wally, he became a great friend after that and a great mentor and, uh, you know, very much miss him. Hmm. I love hearing that. It sounds like he, he really made a mark. That's, a, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. How can people find you if they want to reach out and say hi? Or yeah, sure. More? This is a real challenge for me, nine minutes. I usually talk for like 90 minutes. So uh, <laughs> thank you for having me and keeping me concise. Uh, but yeah, Kyle York, again, you can find me on Twitter at kyork20. Follow me there. I'm very active. I'll also visit york.ie, www.york.ie. That's our website, our team. We have an incredibly active uh, growth blog for startups to grow. I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the internet. I'm not, a, I'm not hard to find. So I look forward to connecting with all of you. That's awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please do go check us out at www.conciliateam.com. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care.